I would like to thank you all for coming here today as we gather to support Iranian, Iranian women-led revolutionary movement. I would like to welcome honorable members of parliament, Ms. Lansman and Mr. Kimiak, on behalf of the Iranian community. Thank you very much for making time today to be here, and thank you for all your continued support of the Iranian people. We have prepared a short video for what has been going on in Iran since late September.
from within Iran and across the world reflects a shared vision of freedom for the people of Iran. Today, more than ever, Iranian youth face significant oppression and systemic corruption. The death of Mahsa Amini and the unmasking of the Iran's government frank violations of women's rights. It's just one example of many. In the past 70 days, Iranian security forces have killed at least 440 people, 55 of whom which are children. More than 16,000 people have been arrested while the Islamic Republic regime is using all sorts of brutal torture, such as systemic sexual assault and rape on these political prisoners in order to crash their movement. As we are gathered here today, Islamic Republic terrorist forces are using heavy machine guns to crack down the innocent people of Kurdistan. We honor the memory of all who make the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom of their country, and we promise that we will not stop fighting until the freedom of our beloved motherland, Iran. Today, we are demanding justice. Justice for all who got killed in flight PS752. Justice for all those who got killed in bloody November. Justice for Mahsas and Nikas. Justice for Kion and for all who got killed by the Islamic Republic regime. We are grateful to the Canadian government and other Western and European governments that have expressed solidarity with the oppressed people of Iran, but the time for nice words has passed. The eyes of the Iranian communities living in your countries are focused on your actions at this historical moment. Come and stand on the right side of history and support the Iranian people with your actions. The Islamic Republic regime has lost its legitimacy for ruling over Iran. We ask the Canadian government and other Western governments to recognize the revolution of the Iranian people and stop all negotiations with the regime. Expel all ambassadors Expel all ambassadors and representatives of the Islamic Republic from their countries. We demand that Western governments start negotiations with Iranian opposition groups to find the best way of transition from the Islamic Republic to a democratic and free Iran. We are asking the Canadian government to add IRGC to its designated terrorist group. For once and for all, Ban all IRGC members and their families from entering Canada. Revoke all members and their families from entering Canada. Revoke all residency status from them and seize all their money and assets in benefit of all Islamic Republic regime victims. We ask the international community and human rights organizations to use all their resources to hold the Islamic Republic regime accountable and stop the brutal crackdown of the Iranian people and release all political prisoners. We are asking the fact-finding mission to investigate the crimes of the Islamic Republic regime against humanity and collect evidence and document these crimes for the formation of international courts the day after the overthrow of the Islamic Republic regime. We are asking CSIS and CRA to investigate Iranian regime-backed so-called charities here in Calgary and in all major Canadian cities, as we strongly believe that these charities are just the front of, for the regime's money laundering operation while spying and harassing Iranian Canadian citizens. We want the Canadian government to set up an online tipping system as soon as possible to collect information about the agents of the Islamic Republic of Iran in Canada so the members of the Canadian Iranian community can share the information with the Canadian government. We are asking CSIS and RCMP to do their duty in keeping Iranian Canadian activists safe here in Canada as too many people have been experiencing harassment and death threats from Islamic Republic agents and sympathizers recently. The inaction of our security agencies is concerning for our community. The Islamic Republic regime has not and does not shy away from the bloody repression of the Iranian people. But it is no secret to anyone that the intensity of killing and repressions in Kurdistan and Balochistan are horribly higher than in other regions of the country. And due to the internet corruption and lack of access to news sources, we don't have the exact number of casualties and victims. We are asking all governments and tech companies to use all their resources 
to provide reliable internet access for the Iranian people. We are asking IRCC to establish a hot online or an online system for those Iranian political refugees that are forced to flee from their country due to the current situation and bring them to safety as soon as possible. There is a war going on against unarmed civilians in Iran, and it has to be treated as such. As a result of the current revolutionary movement in Iran, too many university students have been banned from universities by the oppressive regime. We are asking the IRCC to expedite the student visa process for those who lost their education rights in Iran. We are aware that the Canadian Parliament has passed a resolution to prohibit the entry of Iranian regime senior officials. Despite the approval of these new laws, no action has been taken in this matter yet. We ask the Canadian government to start by confiscating the assets and property of Mahmoud Khabari, former central bank chief of Iran who is a notorious embezzler of billions of dollars and deport him and his family from Canada. We, as Canadian citizens, demand our MPs to support our community and raise our voice in the parliament and make the Liberal government accountable regarding our concerns. In the end, we want you, all governments, international organizations, and political parties to know we, Iranian people, are going to overthrow the Islamic Republic with or without the others' help. But after we freed our country, we will not forget our friends who stood by us. And we will neither forgive nor forget those who stood by our enemy. So come and stand on the right side of history. Long live Canada. Long live free Iran. I would like to invite Mr. Greg McLean, Member of Parliament of Calgary Centre, to the podium. Thank you, Armin uh, and Roshka. Thank you so much. That was a compelling speech. I also was moved, I think, like all of us, by the video we saw here. So this is what we have to amplify throughout our country at this point in time. To all of you, thank you for coming out this morning to advance this and amplify the voices about what's happening in Iran right now. Because for us to stay silent, for us not to raise our voices as loud as we can, is as big a sin as complying with the people that are actually imposing this upon the citizens of Iran. But my job here this morning is an honorable one. I join with my colleague, and I will Tom Kamek, to introduce one of our colleagues from Thornhill, a member of parliament, Melissa Lansman, who's here today to talk about what is happening in Iran. Now, I will tell you, uh, Melissa is the member of parliament of Thornhill, but she's also our party's deputy leader. She has a strong voice in caucus. She has a very strong voice in support of the Iranian people and what's happening in Iran right now. And in parliament, she has the strongest voice for, for, of all parliamentarians and all parties about raising the issues about what's happening in Iran right now. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to you. Please join me in welcoming to Calgary, Melissa Lansman. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you for the warm welcome uh, in, in Calgary. Uh, my, my colleagues are going to want to hear this, but I feel very at home in, in Alberta, and it's uh, and it's communities like this who stand on the right side of history, who demand action from the government, who I've been able to speak to right across the country, that give me uh, hope that one day this government will listen. It's people like you, Roshka, who will talk in front of their community, who will say the things that need to be said without fear of reprisal because it matters. 
It matters what each one of us says. And it matters that you have MPs like Greg and a voice like Tom here, who never lets anybody in Ottawa forget about the community that he represents, the community that is demanding that the government do more. People ask me all the time, why do you care? You're not an Iranian Canadian. You don't have any family in Iran. You don't even have any friends in Iran. And my initial answer to them is, why don't you care? How could you watch what we just watched? How could you watch women, young women, students, poets, architects, uh, civil society, the LGBTQ community, fighting for their rights in the most dangerous area of the world against the most dangerous, inhumane regime in the world, how do you turn a blind eye to that? How do you not stand on the right side of history? How do you call yourself a Canadian who believes in freedom, in democracy, in the rule of law, and turn a blind eye to the images that we've seen, not only over the last 70 days, but over the last four decades? Many in Canada have been led to believe that if we were, if we just traded with the Iranian regime, if we just did business with them, if we just negotiated with them, that somehow life would become normal and the regime wouldn't act in a way that kills its own people. That's a lie. We know that's a lie. It hasn't worked. And well, as a Canadian parliamentarian who will stand with you, who will always stand with you, who has always stood with you, who understood this as a teenager who went to high school in Richmond Hill, which probably some of you have started your journey in Canada before you made the good decision of moving out to Alberta, understanding why you came to this country, understanding why the friends of my parent, the friends of the parents of my friends decided to come to Canada and call it home. How do you ignore that? How as Canadians do you watch the scenes every day over the last 40 years and say that that's in any way acceptable? We know this. We, we know that our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers are those in the Iranian community who have family, who have, you know, who have friends, who have their entire lives that they left behind hoping one day to return to a free Iran. How do we not do everything that we can to make sure that our friends and our neighbors and our business partners can do that. And if you don't care about that, which I find hard to believe, how do you not care about 55 Canadians who were killed by a regime who tried to cover it up? 30 more were permanent residents. How do you not care about those who are intimidated in our own communities? with threats of violence, death, kidnapping, of a regime that we know has done this around the world. I want to ask you a question. How many of you have felt intimidated for your principled stand on what is right? How many? Raise your hands. That should be shocking to every single lawmaker in this country. It should be shocking that after knowing CSIS has, has, has said publicly that there are credible death threats to those in the community that we wouldn't do everything we can to protect the Iranian Canadian community. Gina Massa Amini did not get murdered in vain. She struck up something that is very, very hard for the international community to ignore. And while some are still saying nice words and are trying their hardest to ignore it. What is happening there, what is happening all across the country, what is happening all around the world, is not going to be ignored. Now, as a Canadian official, I don't know what a free and democratic Iran looks like. That's not my job. That's the job for the people of Iran when they overthrow this brutal regime to decide. But what I do know, as a Canadian, 
is that we can never let the next 45 years look like the last 45 years, and we've got to stand on the right side of history. <laughs> those in the Baha'i community who have felt persecution. My own faith community who fled Iran. I live next to the largest Persian community in Canada who have told me stories throughout my adult life about why they left. Those in Rojlat who are, are brutally oppressed in a way that we've never seen before in Iran, that the Western world has never seen video. We've got to do everything possible to help people understand that an attack in Tehran means something in Canada. That an attack on our, on our own neighbors, on our own business partners, on our own families, on those who uh, came to Canada to, to work and live and play, and, and make a commitment to a Canadian land. We, we need them to know that we're going to do everything. We need to isolate Iran, who has never been a normal player in the international community, in every organization that we can. Why it doesn't sound absurd to anybody that a regime like that sits on the Women's Council in the UN? How they've ever been a leader or even had a voice on the Human Rights Council is absurd. And more and more government officials that call that out will isolate them, will show the rest of the world that when we act, or when we say something, when we diminish their power and their voice on the world stage, something will happen. There is no revolution in the history that hasn't had the help of those on the outside. And we see this, and I've seen some in my lifetime, I'm seeing another one right now. And if we don't, and if we don't do everything that we can now, we're going to lose an opportunity that is presented uh, to the world to destabilize the most destabilizing and dangerous regime in the entire region. One that kills its own people, one that we can never work with, one that we have to isolate, and one that we have to call out every step of the way. That entire list of demands should be the baseline of what Canada does. That should be the baseline of what it means to stand on the right side of history, like the movement that you're leading amongst young people in Calgary who are gonna watch the video that your friend is Instagramming right now. It matters, it matters what you say. And it matters what you do and it matters that you bring this message up. And I think more and more Canadians understand that there is a difference between right and wrong if you are on the side, side of right. And more and more Canadians are watching it, so do not stop. Keep pushing this government. I, my promise to you, along with Tom and Greg, is that we will continue to push the government to list the IRGC as the terrorists that they are, to use the criminal code to punish them, to get, to get justice for the victims of Flight PS. 752 to get justice for those in the community who call me from their car in an undisclosed location with a blurred out window to tell to blurred out background to tell me that they are afraid to live in this country. That is an that is a call that no MP, that no law enforcement officer, that no Canadian should ever have to take. It should never happen here, and we're going to ensure that we're going to stand with you until it never does. Tom here has, has this on uh, lock. You have a very good advocate in Ottawa for everything 
that is being said in this uh, in this community. Never forget Tom as one of your friends. Never forget Greg as one of your friends. Thank you, Ms. Lansman, for your amazing remarks. And we give another round of applause for her. We as the Iranian community would like to thank you all again, and a special thanks to the honorable members of parliament for being here today, and for your com continued support for our community. If you would like to take a photo with our special guests, there's a photo opportunity right after this event, and there will be enough time for everyone. Thank you all for coming out today, and long live Iran.